What was your first job? Uh, my first job was delivering flyers for the our, my neighbor, who was a realtor, and she wanted to promote her business, so uh, she needed some help just delivering flyers and putting them on people's doorsteps. So I got a penny per flyer. What is something you learned last week? It's actually really not something new. It's just more of a reminder that each of us have uh, our own experiences and we're some of our own experiences. And that no matter how much you think you know about a topic or an idea of something, it could be something really simple, that when you meet other people, they might, they might if you give them a chance and they give you an opportunity to expand your knowledge about that particular topic. So in this case, it's about, you know, a celebration. You know, at a end of the harvest type of thing. So, I learned that it's more like a continuous learning, I suppose, rather than something new. It's always something that you kind of are reminded of that there's always something to learn from from each of us, from each other. What is your favorite part of the day? Nighttime. That's usually when I'm the most productive, and do a lot of my work at night. It's quieter. Um, there's less activity, less less obligations to do things, I suppose, and I have more free time in the nighttime. What is one thing that you can do that not many else can do? Play drums. Surf. If you could master any language, what would it be? <laughs> Mandarin. <laughs> what chore do you absolutely hate doing and why? I don't really enjoy doing dishes. And the reason why I don't enjoy doing dishes is because after I eat, I just want to relax instead of doing dishes. What do you get every time you order groceries? Probably a bag of tortilla chips. What is your fondest memory of high school? I think skateboarding at school. My high school, we actually had a little embankment that you can do tricks on. And so... I always enjoyed doing tricks on that and banking at my school. So it was sort of like, my school is sort of like a little skate park in a way. Um, and there weren't skate parks at the time. So I really remember that being really a fun thing to do while at school. If you had to eat the same meal every day, what would you eat? Tacos. And what do you like most about your current job? It's not a job. It's just something that I like to do. And it's my passion and it's it's just fun. So I don't really see it as a job. So I don't see it as a paycheck. I like working with students. I like helping students and helping people um, pursue their dreams and develop their potential. And I really like trying to connect with young folks to help them along their way to to be who they wanna be. And so I really enjoy that. Where did you grow up? I grew up in San Jose. So not too far down the road. If you could witness one event from history, what would it be? I think it's something that just popped in my head. It would be interesting to witness one of my relatives, um, my great-great-grandfather, um, when he first arrived to the United States in 1869. It would have been interesting to witness that event and see what it, what it was really like. What is the most embarrassing moment you've ever had? Uh, in high school, when I was, I, I guess it wouldn't be categorized as the most embarrassing, but it was embarrassing. I remember I had fallen asleep. You know, as a teenager, you get tired, so you go home and sleep, or you sleep at weird hours. And so for some reason, I fell asleep, and it was one of those times of year where 7 o'clock at night and 7 o'clock in the morning look about the same. It was kind of dusky and not really somewhat still much still illuminated but there's still some light sunlight and it's not too dark so i'd fallen asleep and i woke up at seven uh, and i'm supposed to pick up my friend at like 7 15 um, to go to school we walk together at school uh, that particular year and so i, I realized that it was uh you know it's after seven so there's no way i was gonna get ready to go to pick him up so i went downstairs 
And I got on the phone and I called my friend, but his mom answered and said, you know, my friend wasn't you know, taking a shower or whatever. So I'm like, okay, would you tell him that I'm going to be late? Pick him up. And, said, and she said, you mean for tomorrow? I'm like, no, like right now I'm going to be late. Because like, hey, I just woke up late. And she kept on insisting, like, you, you mean tomorrow? Because I kept thinking it was the morning. And I'm sitting there confused because I just woke up. I'm kind of groggy. And I kept sort of going back and forth with his mom about this. Uh, you know, I wasn't mad at or anything. I was just kind of like, I don't know what's going on. And I'm just trying to let him know I'm going to be late. And then my mom was calling me the whole time and saying, Brian, 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 it's seven o'clock at night. And I went, oh, oops. <laughs> so that's pretty embarrassing. What are your thoughts on climate change? It's real. You better deal with it. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Um, the power to heal. Power to heal, like disease, physical ailments. What would be the title of a movie about yourself? I have no idea. What would you do as a president? I would equalize the income gap um, for all, all Americans. So, um, find some kind of common ground where there isn't such a, a large gap. And with that, uh, use that, uh, I guess, new system of economics to ensure that every, every American has their essential needs met. So that means universal health care, that's quality enough quality care, you know, that they could have. Um, people have a place to live and to basic living um, more than just having basic level income, but like basic living, like you have a, a home that you can live in a dwelling. It may not be the most extravagant, but it's a place that you can live in and uh, not be on the streets. And so that you don't have to worry so much about having to make an X amount of dollars to buy a home. So if you had a lower paying job, you knew you at least have a place to live and you'd have health care. So, I think that would be my my goal as a president. How would I do that? I don't know. <laughs> it's more complicated than that, of course, but that's what I would do as a president. Who is your biggest inspiration? My mom's one of the, my inspirations. My parents, my dad. I think being able to um, more or less bootstrap your way in this society in a very racist America, I think that's a an uh, admirable thing for people to do to navigate and I think it's hard enough just to raise a family and to earn money and um, have a good life a middle class life but then to do it really from nothing and to do it against the odds when things are stacked against you I think that's uh, it's inspirational it just shows character it shows um, shows grit it shows um, how people have compassion and understanding and how to still be a good person and and still navigate the really challenging situations so they're my inspiration and i think every every elder that i've had including my grandparents as well i think it's the same same sort of scenario we're tied so i think i'm not where i'm at without them and their work and so uh, i'm inspired by them what is something that you can't do, but wish you could? Well, the superpower of healing people physically. Um, yeah, that's one thing. Um, I'd say doing doing air, airs, like airs in a, in a pool, like skateboarding. I can't blast airs in a pool, so that would be cool to do. But what is the first thing you do after you come home? Well, it depends, but I usually say hi to my kids. And then uh, I usually just change in something more comfortable, I'll probably change in shorts or something. Take the dog out. Yeah. So just basic stuff. What is your favorite memory from your childhood? Not being tied to a screen. So I think being outside, exploring the world, um, getting to know people, interacting with people, independent of a screen. Yeah, 
just being free to play and explore and to sort of have my own experiences. I think that was a great experience. What is one thing that you wish you knew when you were 16 years old? I wish I knew there was more opportunities in terms of not just educational opportunities, but I guess industry opportunities, especially for a creative person, uh, a creative industry. I wish I knew more about that um, because there's a lot of opportunities to pursue a creative profession and, and pay, get paid a, a livable wage. And I didn't know any of that when I was 16. What is one thing you want to do before you die? Hold my grandchildren. What is your favorite word? Brad. What do you do when you can't fall asleep? Not a problem. Um, but if I, if, if I guess if I need to go get sleepy, I just watch a movie. It's fine. Don't make me fall asleep. What was the last book you read? So do you want to talk about race? What are your guilty pleasures? Like a snack. Yeah, I'm a midnight snacker. What is your favorite animal and why? Dragon. Because dragons are cool and they're mythical and mysterious and they're powerful and they're, they can heal. Um, they're just awesome all the way around. What are you most looking forward to in the next 10 years? Enjoying uh, watching my kids grow up to be young adults uh, like yourself and seeing them sort of develop in that way and be uh, the type of person they become. The common thing that you think about when you're alone? Probably how I, to improve whatever it is that I'm doing at the moment. So whether it's a lesson or whether it's my own artwork um, or design work or um, I think a lot about surfing and, and surfboards. So I think a lot about the performance and the construction and design of them. Um, I think about how design thinking and creative problem solving can really be implemented into lots of the things that we do in our daily lives that we don't solve problems. But if we were to apply some of the design thinking principles to it, things would be so much more effective and so much more targeted. So I, I think of that, of how to make the world better through, through design. So I think about that a lot, kind of running into our daily problems, but then thinking about how we could generate solutions, uh, even as an individual in an isolated manner, how can you address them in a powerful way? So I think about that a lot. Basically, how to change the world or better people's lives. I think about it a lot. What product would you stockpile if you found out it wasn't going to be sold anymore? A wetsuit. So that way I would stay warm and you know, surf all the time. Yeah. What was the last thing you purchased? Uh, wetsuit repair materials. If you could meet any person, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Bruce Lee, because Bruce Lee is awesome. Um, I think Bruce Lee uh, is a great example of uh, a common person, a common, a common person uh, that has elevated his status through his uh, through his his own his own deeds through his own drive. It's not something that was given to him. He, he put himself in these positions and he was a risk taker in promoting unity and harmony through people through his, his skill set. And his skill set was martial arts and acting. And so, you know, he's iconic and legendary for a lot of reasons. And part of that is because he transcended himself as a human um, because of the things he aspired to do, but because what he did is, I'm not gonna say it's extraordinary, but in some ways it is exceptional because it's those things where 
if you are trying to develop your own potential, you know, he's really promoting that to be essentially the best person you can be. And um, not that he's the only one that said this. I mean, he's taking a lot of this from Chinese philosophy. But, you know, if you are malleable uh, in the moment, uh, he always often says to be like water. That's, uh, you know, a proverb that he's always reciting. Um, and if you're always wanting to be, um, so it's being flexible and being responsive to the moment. Um, yeah, it, it'd just be really cool to meet him for, for all those reasons. I mean, you know, being, being so closely connected to him, but yet never have met him, it would be awesome to actually meet him and know him personally. The places you visited, what was your favorite? It's always Hawaii. What is your favorite island in Hawaii? I like the big island the best because it's, it's the least visited island in terms of the, the major islands. So it's less touristy. So it's a little more low-key uh, that way. If you could change your name, what would you change it to? I'd actually probably change it to the, the correct pronunciation in Cantonese. So, which I've actually thought about. What would you do if you suddenly got $100 million? So the, the boring stuff, I'd pay off my bills. Um, so I pay off my houses for uh, myself and for my immediate family. So my parent, my mom, and my in-laws, um, brothers. I would probably um, obviously do the boring stuff of making sure I had my kids' college education sort of scored away. So, so money aside for taking care of that type of stuff uh, for for my kids' future, the generational wealth. Um, I would absolutely donate a good portion of it and invest it into helping other people. Probably people that are at the bottom, bottom rung in terms of homelessness, but I think people that are also the working poor and really trying to give them opportunities, maybe perhaps for an education or for skilled trade, so that way they can get a better paying job or a secure paying job um, if that's what they wanted. So I would definitely donate uh, money and resources towards something like that. Honestly, I'd still probably teach, but I'd probably take some time off to go do some of this uh, this work and, and bring that into the class, back to the classroom, those experiences of, of helping people um, maybe on more on the grassroots level. I'd definitely travel. So in that time I would take off, I'd probably want to go travel somewhere. And, um, you know, I'm not gonna say like totally party, but just like enjoy having something that's a little more relaxing and not so much work. Uh, yeah, that's probably what I would do. Uh, I would probably consider, yeah, in terms of the charity part of it, I think there's a lot of the ways that I could um, uh, sort of invest the money and, and give it give it away to, to help people. So, so uplifting other people. So whether it's through organized organizations or something that I would create. Um, I probably make something also related to promoting uh, arts and creativity, uh, education, uh, K through 12, with the emphasis of making sure that the elementary school level and um, middle school level had a, a actually robust arts program that's not auxiliary accessory sort of thing, but actually meaningful and helps build people up as a, as a whole in terms of education. Because there's not enough of it. What is your favorite restaurant? I don't really have one favorite restaurant. Uh, what restaurant do you eat the most at? Usually one of the sushi places around here or um, one of the talk areas around here. So either Japanese or Mexican. If you could travel to somewhere new, where would you go? I'd love to visit Fiji in the Maldives in uh, Australia. And I'd love to see Japan. Do you believe aliens exist? Well, in here. <laughs> what are your biggest pet peeves? Uh, mean people. Yeah, when people are just mean to people. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, that's probably the biggest pet peeve is when just people are just cruel or mean to people and, and not really just approaching it from a, a place of, um, I guess, hate and negativity. So I, I guess just negative, people just being generally negative. What is your favorite holiday? Summer. Do you have a favorite sports team? I do. Uh, San Jose Sharks, LA Dodgers. What was your proudest moment as a teacher? Other than getting hired at the interview, um, that was a proud moment. Um, in the classroom, there's so many different moments, I suppose, but I think in general, um, and I, I recently got a letter from a student, um, it just validates everything that I've tried to do as a teacher. Um, so I think the proudest moment for me is, is hearing that feedback from students about the ways that have helped them in the way that, um, in a sense, I've made a difference to help them get to where they want to go. So that validation is, is, you know, I guess one of those proud moments. So, yeah. So other than getting hired at my job interview, I think that it's those moments. So there's a lot of those little moments uh, throughout my career. If there was one thing you could improve at Monta Vista, what would it be? I think the first thing is, um, it's not just Monta Vista, but I think the school experience, I love for it to foster creativity to its fullest because it doesn't foster creativity in a way that I think it could. And I don't mean like having more arts programs. I mean like really from top to bottom, really valuing people's experiences and the creativity uh, that we are as human beings and looking at that in all our subject matters. So I think that that's one area I'd like to see improved. Um, another area I'd like to see improved is how we, how we teach and learn um, from each other. So teachers learn from students and students learn from teachers. I think people don't necessarily see it from that perspective, but um, I think if we can improve having a more real-time responsive environment, then I think people, everybody involved will have a richer teaching and learning experience. And what I mean by that is it's more than I, you know, someone giving a lesson and then asking if you understand or not, and then you raise your hand or don't, or you put a little happy face on a piece of paper, but like really being more responsive to, to what's happening in the classroom to students. So a little more student centered is my point. Like really be more student centered. So we have a lot of teachers in our school is very, very good at that, uh, comparatively speaking. But I think that's an area, a huge area that we can improve on being more student centered in that approach. And so part of that is, is responsive teaching uh, and learning. If you are not a teacher, what do you think you would be? Um, I'd be the towel boy at the, at the pool in Hawaii. Um, something simple where I can just not have to think about things and just relax in a nice location. I'm just kidding about the tall boy. Um, actually, I would, I'd probably be a geologist. I'd be looking at rocks all the day, all day long, gemstones and soils, that type of stuff. If you had to get a tattoo, what would it be and why? I already have one. Um, so if I were to get new ones, it, I'd get a dragon and a tiger on each forearm. And the why, um, I think, just kind of go back to dragons. I mentioned about dragons, how they're cool. And I think it's part of my heritage. So there's a lot of symbolism with that. And I think with tiger, it's also very similar to the very iconic, iconic symbols in, in uh, the martial arts world. And. Yeah, I think that's kind of the gist of it for the most part. What new course would you want Monte Vista to add? I don't know if it would be a new course. 
But I think that a, a new lesson that or unit or learning that I think it would be great to have across all grades so that every student got it and then it progressively got stronger from one year to another. So I would say um, design thinking, creative problem solving. It's not a new course, but I'd also bring back things like home economics and um, uh, maybe something along that line, but maybe hybrid and call it something different. So it's about life skills, not just like, okay, how do you write a check in a checkbook, but then having financial literacy. So learning how to live in a system or a capitalist society that really promotes um, debt and debt and debt spending, but then also having the idea of spending within your means and only, you know, purchasing things that you can pay for. And then looking at how do you um, navigate career choices. So it's sort of like, it's also career mentoring as well, whether that's writing college essays or applying to schools or colleges or to trade schools and, and finding things that might fit what you're interested in and then having some discussion or lessons or units about how to do that. So how do you, how do you become a plumber? How, how do you become, um, you know, how do you make six figures and not go to college? Um, how do you, you know, if you wanted to be a doctor, you know, we have a lot of, I think, community resources. So then how, how does one do that if they don't know how, right? Those types of things. It would be nice to have students engaged in community development and involvement. And then that's more than volunteering at places, but really volunteering, but then learning to be part of shaping practices and policies that help other people. What is the most valuable lesson you've learned in your life so far? There's a lot, I suppose. Um, one thing that I have always I guess, told myself from the beginning of my career here, and I guess I've embodied when I was younger too, just didn't really have words for it is, and it's kind of go back to what um, in the, my reference to Bruce Lee about um, being like water and sort of being malleable, but yet being strong, um, being you, water can fit in a container or water could, you know, cut through a container. It's really just being flexible, being responsive to your environment. And I think uh, that means being willing to change, building capacity to learn, building capacity to, to fail and to fall short, but then to get back up and to improve and try again. Uh, those are all, you know, people kind of talk of this like growth mindset, but it's more than growth mindset. I think it's more about, like I said, being responsive to, to what's happening around you and learning and then trying and being responsive in an appropriate way, right? Trying to find ways to respond to things in a positive, productive way, rather than something that's detrimental or takes away or is destructive to you or others. But look at, looking at how you could essentially just take the energy and turn it and channel it. So whether it's negative energy and deflecting it or it's energy that it's misguided and then redirecting to, to be productive. Um, so yeah, I think it's just being flexible. That's sort of the, the main gist of it, just being flexible.